Welcome to eSecurity Solutions 2024 Security Planning Webinar. I'm Tom Ruffalo, CEO of eSecurity Solutions. Today, we're going to take an interesting approach to helping you with your 2024 planning. We have five speakers, each of which is going to get 10 minutes to present you with the, their company's best ideas for 2024 planning. I'll kick things off today with my view of 2024 planning. Um, and just to let you know, my background, I'm a CISA with 20 years of security experience running uh, eSecurity Solutions. Uh, e our company uh, works every day with companies like yours, learning and understanding what your needs are. And we're adding to that the understanding of what's going on with the broader market. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow my 10-minute presentation with the best ideas from WatchGuard, Risk Recon, Fortinet, and Trend Micro. These companies are all leaders in their respective areas of security. You can submit questions in the question box. And we'll either respond during the event or immediately afterwards. So let's set the stage for 2024 planning by showing some thought provoking quotes from various security sources. This is the theoretical, you know, what's going on in the world approach. Um, so in 2024, Zero Trust moves from being a network security model to being something adaptive and holistic. Greater than 60% of the organizations are going to embrace zero trust by 2025 as a starting place. Lack of talent or human failure will be the responsible for half of the cybersecurity incidents by 2025. Cybersecurity complex complexity is growing, right? So we're seeing um, cyber assets that we have to track and protect growing at 133% year over year. Security vulnerabilities and unresolved findings increasing by 589%. AI is, uh, will be, and everybody knows, will be a transformative impact both on attack and defense. And cyber resilience will be the strategic priority for 2024. How to recover quickly will be a focus area. All right, so let's look at um, the challenges, right? So number one challenge is the data assets sprawl, right? We've got employees, partners, servers, applications, and data all moving to the cloud. And to think that that doesn't impact our security planning is, is not really a very good assumption. The security model to protect distributed assets is dramatically different than the old centralized model. This is probably the biggest hole in certain security for most companies, not having adopted, adapted to this new reality. We see very slow adoption by small and mid-sized companies to adapt to this new uh, model that needs to be provided to protect data assets brawl, while enterprises are very aggressively adopting it and, and adopting these solutions. We have regulations have always been the focus, but now, uh, qualifying for, for cyber insurance is driving the need for more complexity. We're seeing this every day with our customers. New attack methods that leverage the weakest link will still drive the latest attacks with attackers leveraging weaknesses caused by user and configuration errors, distributed assets or data sprawl, and companies with 2020 security are going to be attacked by attackers with 2024 attack methods, including AI. Lastly, the need to, to get cross-system visibility and security is a challenge and very important. Why is it a challenge? Because, it's, it, because it requires different security and people than we had years ago or two ago. And why is it necessary? Because without it, we can't see complex attacks and we can't respond. So what are the top, what are, what are our top 2024 recommendations to combat these challenges. Number one, uh, in fact, I would say before number one, the first, the assumption. The assumptions are that security solution model has changed and needs to change to, to support this new reality of, uh, of data sprawl and all the other things we mentioned. Budgets are never big enough and the staff's never big enough, right? So, so in terms of solutions, Companies need to provide an optimized security roadmap. It's, it's not appropriate to spend 
money without an adequate amount of planning and definition of your of, of prioritized gaps and then prioritized solutions. If you don't do that, you're not going to have enough money to extend across all the new areas that you need to be addressing. Secondly, apex level security, um, which includes IT monitoring, detection, response solutions are needed to achieve integrated security, meaning a solution that integrates all your information that you have in your system. A 2024, a 24 by seven managed SIM provides the best top levels MDR solution. It complements, but not replaces all other detection response security solutions like EDR. Using managed security or outsourcing managed security to increase security and reduce cost is an important point too, because you don't have enough, it's good. we don't have enough money, we don't have enough resources, you can't retrain them, you can't retain them, it's too expensive, right? So in order to, to manage that, nobody has the resources to do all of that, finding and affording, retain, retaining and training the staff is almost an impossible task. So outsourcing at some level should be a part of every company's security. And um, so adding security to address data sprawl is an important component. That's probably, I mentioned one of the top ones that's not being addressed by most of our customers. So securing cloud data centers, cloud applications, securing your partner relationships and access, remote employees, not just from the, not just securing their employees, but securing the company's data from employees requires new security. Multiple solutions must be combined to provide adequate security, such as cloud security, zero trust security, asset management, the appropriate policies and procedures. Um, using vendor XDR, leveraging the technology that vendors are putting into their, their solutions now to provide cross product security and leveraging that information that, that they have with those products as it evolves over time is going to be an important component. So picking the right vendors with the right XDR solutions that deliver demonstrably higher security is going to be an important thing to focus on. And lastly, even though it's incredibly boring, using having redundant email security solutions, you know, there's to assume that one email security solution is going to protect you from the number one threat vector, which is emails with all of the, the resulting phishing, CEO fraud, malware is probably not a good assumption. Um, so having multiple redundant email security solutions is I think an important component. So those are our top six solutions. Um, we have a blog, you can read about a lot of this stuff on our website. And just as a final note, uh, eSecurity Solutions, which is my company, we provide enterprise level security for all companies, basically small, medium and large. We provide affordable compliance level risk assessments, managed security, and we resell security products from the, like the leading vendors that you're going to hear from today and others. So with that said, we're going to lead into the, the speakers, uh, starting with WatchGuard and Sean Banahan, Risk Recon, Michael Colby, Fortinet with uh, Ian Ray, and Friend Micro with Ramey Bailey. And so we're going to switch to WatchGuard now. Great. Thanks so much, Tom. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Sean Banahan. I'm a director of U.S. Channel Sales here at WatchGuard. I support a large group of partners across approximately 3,000 partners across the U.S. E-Security is one of our more strategic partners, one of our most strategic partners. And so a big thank you to Tom and the team for inviting me to speak. Uh, today, I'm just going to spend the next 10 minutes talking a little bit about WatchGuard's vision for the cybersecurity world in 2024 and beyond. The, the uh, presentation is entitled Preparing Your Cybersecurity Posture for 2024. I'm going to start my discussion um, with a major, major theme that I think all of us are probably, probably pretty familiar with, and that's just the growing complexity and number of threat services that we're having to manage. 62% of mid-market organizations believe their IT environments are more complex now than they were two years ago. I love dropping facts like this. I have them kind of scattered throughout the presentation. So um, it's telling, and this is something that's not going to stop. I think we all know this. It's becoming part of the modern business. You look at this slide kind of left to right, we're talking about threat services on the left and some additional challenges 
on the right, you know, starting with those threat surfaces, we're all dealing with a bag of mixed environments. Most of the customers that I am I speak to are have they have environments that are on premise. They have private, public clouds, hybrid, wireless, and are supporting work remote work environments. I'm actually addressing you today from my home office. I've got no less than three different devices all connected to our work environment, our work, our corporate network. So remote access as we're moving kind of swing right here is uh, is a growing thing. I think we're all aware of this. When I entered 2020 um, and we were coming into COVID, I had uh, a sales team that was based predominantly out of our headquarter here in Seattle. 70% um, of them, I think we're probably up here now. That team has actually grown over the last three years and I have less than 15% of them working from our corporate office today and none of them go in more than one or two days a week. So along with all these real users comes all the devices that they're managing. I just talked about my, you know, I have three sitting right in front of me, desktops, laptops, smartphones, tablets, um, all of that coupled with the rise of IOT devices. I was actually on a call uh, with a partner just a couple of weeks ago in Canada, and they were talking about inserting cybersecurity into, of all things, a dentist chair. So you've got all of these threat, these threat surfaces are expanding kind of wildly. And that's kind of the first problem. And then we're dealing with these risks or these challenges on the right. According to Pulse Research, over 76% of businesses are understaffed for their cybersecurity needs. So the security skills deficit is a real thing. It's a challenge. We've been talking about it for a couple of years. It's still a major issue. Um, also, according to Pulse Research, despite being a top priority for IT leaders, over 70% of businesses invest less than 2% of their, their revenue and cybersecurity. I'm going to say that again. Over 70% of businesses invest less than 2% of their revenue on cybersecurity. So budgets are tight. And there is a business that the businesses like yours lack the time required to prioritize critical security tasks. Again, false research, 41% of IT leaders suggest they rarely or never have time to look at security logs. All of this is going to add up to a rapidly, rap, excuse me, a rapidly growing and increasingly complex threat surface. There are organizations like yours don't have the time, expertise, or budget to manage effectively. This is why you need to partner with IT consulting organizations like eSecurity, MSPs like eSecurity, to help you manage this, these threats. All right, so getting into what we're seeing uh, coming up in 2024, there's a large list of these that kind of come down internally here at WatchGuard, what to look for. These are the four that I picked, I think are probably growing the most from our perspective. Um, the first is uh, business email compromises. 90% of cyber attacks begin with a phishing email, and 65% of those are spear phishing emails. I, I'm assuming that most of you know what spear phishing emails are, but if you don't, those are just phishing emails that contain information, contextual information specific to the recipient of the email. Earlier this year, I got an email from Prakash Panjwani, who is our CEO. He had sent me a PDF that was attached to an email this, of course, ends up being a hacker. I'll give you the end, the punchline at the beginning of the story. But it asked me in the email, they were asking me to strip all of the logos out of that PDF and send them back to him because he was on a partner site and was working on a brochure. It was crafty. I, for the record, I did not fall for it. But we're seeing hackers use publicly available C-level executive data um, to create these kind of convincing spoofs. We're seeing malicious virtual meeting invites, deep fake audio and visuals. We're also seeing the rise of AI. I'd be surprised if you don't hear about AI in, in the course of the, of the presentations today. But the, the artificial intelligence, what's scary about that to me is that it's, it's not only allowing these, these threat actors to create more convincing spoofs, but they're actually allowing to do this at scale. Spear phishing emails used to be a much, a much more manual, much heavier lift. Now they have the library of the internet and the AI to go and grab that. So email protection, DNS filtering, those kinds of tools are what you're gonna need to, to kind of think through as you're planning to address that. Credential attacks, lost, cracked, or stolen uh, corporate credentials account for 49% of breaches. Threat, threat, excuse me. Threat actors are gonna use brute force attacks, social engineering techniques, dark web markets, things like that to go and pull these, these credentials. <clears throat> Ransomware, this is, this is one that's always gonna be on these slides. Uh, we, we've been seeing this growing massively for years. It's gonna continue to do that. In 2022, uh, uh, the uh, the amount of ransomware grew by 627%. 627%. Uh, 
and it accounted for 34% of all cyber insurance claims in 2022. Tom talked about in his, about that a little bit in his opener. Um, over 20% of enterprises worldwide experienced some kind of ransomware that they reported in 2022. And we've seen ransoms paid as high as 30 million bucks. So this is incredibly lucrative. It's not going to stop anytime soon. You need a layered approach to your security to address all of the different ways that's getting into your network. The last one is maybe new to my list. It's not necessarily something new, but this is, is kind of something that, that's been on, on the rise lately, and I've had more and more conversations with, and that's living off the land attacks. And if you're not familiar with these, these are just where, co where hackers are actually using legitimate system software and functions to launch attacks behind the network. They're often file lists, they're usually script based, and they're usually originating at the endpoint. So an endpoint protection system is gonna be critical to address those. As we forward, a little bit more about complexity. Um, the key in 2024 is to understand the complex security challenges you're gonna be facing. We've talked about a couple of these, the rise of these, these cybersecurity threats and vectors. Um, I think generally speaking, cybersecurity criminals are gonna be leveraging a mix of kind of the tried and true attack excuse me, the tried and true attacks they've always used along with new advanced techniques such as the AI phishing stuff I talked about. You need to be asking yourself, do I have all my bases covered? Are my environments, users, and devices protected? Where are my weak spots or areas plagued by complexity? And what can I afford not to evolve my security to address? The next one is regulatory compliance. And this is really about fees. I think it, you know it, we've all are aware, should be aware about GDPR, that's coming down the line, HIPAA, PCI compliance, the California Consumer Privacy Act. All of that stuff results in, in what potentially are, are, are massive penalties if you're not addressing those or setting up your security environment to, to, to kind of adhere to those. Uh, Meta earlier this year was fined $1.3 billion for violating GDPR rules. So it's not just about one and done. You need to go in and show that you're maintaining the, the, the compliance against these regulations. And the next cybersecurity insurance, we've talked about this a couple of times already, it's come up. Um, this kind of plays into that other one. And cyber insurance companies have been paying out hundreds of millions of dollars. They're dealing with these breaches, they're limiting coverage, they're tightening standards. I heard about this, it was kind of the every single conversation I would, I would argue, probably nine out of 10 conversations I had in 21 and 22 were in some form related to cybersecurity insurance. It's a little bit less in 23, but it's still uh, prevalent. Um, so for me, the questions are, does, does your security stack meet all your pertinent regulatory requirements and cyber, cyber insurance criteria? Do you have visibility and reporting capabilities to prove that compliance over the long term? Remember, it's not just about one and done, it's about maintaining it. And then there's the security sprawl, uh, tool sprawl rather. And this is really where you need to leverage a, a partner like eSecurity to come in and help you make sure you're, 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 create, you're addressing all of these needs and you're not creating more complexity in your environment. Another cool fact or uh, data point, 64%, 64% of security teams report trouble completing timely threat investigations and respond act response actions due to complex disparate management consoles across multiple connected security tools. Again, this is where you wanna use an IT consultant like eSecurity. Okay, I think I'm coming up on the tail end of my time here. But um, kind of leaving you with that, WatchGuard has, has designed our, our system to provide a unified security platform for our partners. It's really about making it really easy uh, to implement WatchGuard solutions, to integrate them into existing environments, and really easy for our, our partners to consume those products. We have flexible pay options and things like that, allow partners like eSecurity to consume them very easily. We even manage, uh, provide MDR managed service provide, um, solutions to help them OEM those products to you and address these needs. So it's a layered approach uh, that we employ to address all of these, some of the, all of the threats I've talked about. I think I'm coming, kind of coming up on my last minute here. I will thank everybody so much for, for letting me, me, me chat at you for a couple of minutes. Rebecca, I'm gonna pass the baton back to you and maybe you can go on to our next speaker. So for our next speaker, we have Mike Kobe from Risk Recon. Excellent, thank you. So, Let's talk a little bit about uh, your attack surface, right? What What is it? What does that look like? You know, we used to focus on, you know, the, the you know the perimeter, right? So your firewalls, and then hey, we've got to monitor the endpoints, and and on and on and on. But 
um, as our last speaker noted, right? It's, it's, it's changed so much. So, so what is your attack surface really? Well, is it your own enterprise? Yes, of course, it's your own enterprise. That is really now too narrow of a view. Really, the attacks are starting out in the ecosystem, right? The, the ransomware attack that's going to hit you, it, it's down the road. If you're just looking at the little part of your traffic circle, you're going to be blindsided by it, right? In order to get situational awareness, you need to take a big picture pro approach, right? You've got to look at your vendors and it's your supply chain, right? That That's really where a lot of these threats are going to be uh, coming from. So anybody with teenagers will understand this sentiment. I trust you, but I don't trust your friends. Uh, that is the approach that, as was mentioned, in, in insurance companies, they're paying out more than ever. So they will not insure you unless you've shown, yes, your own due diligence. Are you doing the right things to, to make sure that you're secure? But they're looking at your vendors now as well. Why? Well, <laughs> Because they're losing money, man, 51%, and this number is only going to get bigger, of organizations have experienced a data breach resulting from a third party, right? So it's, you can be secure, but are, are all the other vendors that you're doing business with secure, right? Um, the ransomware, uh, it, it, it's adapting, okay? So there's ransomware as a service. That's big business. There's supply chain-enabled ransomware. So think Kaseya and move it. These attacks are getting uh, larger and more common, and that's that's not going to change, right? It's 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 now an established part of the playbook. Okay, so to think, well, I'm secure, so I'm, you know, you're you're still going to be vulnerable depending on the security of your vendors, and, and that's the visibility you need to have. So, you know, what do you do about it, right? Uh, so for yourself, right, and and <laughs> it's. It's uh, it's gonna sound like you know whenever you go to the doctor and they and they tell you to lose weight or maybe that's just me and you're like I know eat, eat better exercise more I got it I hear you right we all know right update your risk management program so review your policies the standards your assessment criteria um, employee security training which was mentioned is is critical and doing that routinely not just once. Um, <laughs> uh, Years ago, I was in, I was working in a SOC and um, we have a customer have, uh, a, we see that they're compromised. We get them on the phone right away and we hear them in this little office and they're talking to each other and they say, yeah, the same thing happens when I open it up. It's just nothing. And, I was like, and they're like, stop clicking. <laughs> um, so, so having that employee security training and having it regularly is important. And then the old standbys, right? Uh, stay current on software patching. Only expose authorized and hardened network services to the internet. And you'd think, well, obviously, but, but in our world, so we're crawling the internet every seven to 10 days and using direct observation, we're doing uh, a security assessment against, against seven different domains on every device that we see. And you'd be amazed how many are running uh, really old um, and, and, and unpatched servers that are, you know, it doesn't even have to be recent malware. It could be something from, you know, 2011 that they're vulnerable to. Um, and then, you know, finally, um, regular backups, really so that when you are hit, right, you've got a recent backup. So what does is, what is Risk Recon do? So we give you the visibility uh, to really to which vendors are putting you at risk, right, and an action plan to resolve the high priority issues. You know, meaning, you know, you're not going to get everybody to fix everything, but you can look at your critical vendor and say, hey, here, here are the top five issues. Or, you know, if it's a massive vendor and, you know, you're probably not going to get a response, at least you know what mitigate, you know where the vulnerability is going to come from and what mitigating factors you need to focus on. Right. So we look at your your own enterprise and your vendors, your supply chain exactly the way an attacker does. Right. What's the highest value asset with the least protection? OK. Um, and, you know, and for the third party risk management program, you know, mainly there's a lot of questionnaires being sent out, which is great. Right. Um, but we all know. Right. In security, it's uh, trust, but verify. Right. So we're the verify part of that equation, making sure that the, the, the top issues that are going to put you at risk can be addressed or mitigated. So I, I, I kept mine short and sweet, but again, thank you all for your time today.
So next on our speaker list, we're going to have Fortinet speaking. Hey, everyone. This is Ian Ray, systems engineer here at Fortinet. And uh, we'll spend the next couple minutes just going over a little bit about where Fortinet sees some challenges, trends um, in the cybersecurity space, a little bit about some of the solutions uh, we see are successful uh, to customers in terms of securing their people, their processes, and their data. Um, and uh, with the end, I'll uh, leave you guys with just a an idea of you know some of the things Fortinet has to offer as folks to, you know address some of these challenges. So. Some of the biggest things we're seeing um, is complexity is slowing down customers' uh, digital initiatives. So what that means is, you know, as customers are deploying certain applications, moving certain workloads to the public cloud, to maybe different data centers, to SaaS applications, or even more distributed in a uh, edge computing um, standpoint. The landscape for where those resources are residing is ever, you know, or ever growing, right? And so the other aspect of it is where users and devices reside now, you know, whether the people be at home, traveling, at different branch sites, or even at a factory or a warehouse where the actual environment is a little bit different than what, let's say, the traditional office setting used to be. The interoperability between both where applications and resources reside and where the users and devices are connecting from, the evolution of where IT and security and networking kind of merge together has obviously grown pretty complex. And so one of the biggest challenges we see based on studies we've conducted and, and just third party reports is there is, you know, a, a trend of too many IT or too many security stacks, too many vendors to manage, not to mention growing with the consistent skill shortage uh, when it comes to cybersecurity as a whole. And, you know, it makes sense when you think about the different users and device based security tools that are out there, uh, just networking security as a whole, uh, cloud security, and then obviously all the tools to manage those different um, types of workloads. It can be pretty complex, especially if you have one tool that isn't talking to another. Um, you have different, uh, you know, management planes obviously leaves a lot of gaps um, in terms of what you actually have control over. Um, so what we're coming to find is with customers, they are resorting and looking at consolidation as a way to reduce complexity and ultimately accelerate some of those digital initiatives. And really, we see consolidation in three key areas. Um, one of them is the consolidation of networking and security, uh, something Fortinet uh, refers to as secure networking, where you're enhancing the digital experience for uh, your end users. So anything from the LAN, wireless, uh, you know, corporate firewalls. So more on the infrastructure of how different sites interoperate how they communicate with each other, making sure that things are application aware and you're, you know, you're not uh, spending more than you need to be and getting the most out of the infrastructure you do have in place. The other big piece we see is from a digital risk uh, enhancement, and that typically comes from a cybersecurity platform approach. So having a central place to manage these different uh, kind of solution areas, um, being able to report on certain events 
and leverage the uh, built-in analytics uh, that come with a cybersecurity platform. Um, you know, this can also include, let's say, non-traditional infrastructure type tools, so web applications, uh, email, um, you know, uh, how you respond to certain incidents. So being able to leverage the tools from a platform approach makes it easier on your security teams to focus on one area rather than, you know, playing point the finger if something does happen. And then lastly, reducing the cyber uh, physical risk. So as the increase of, let's say, uh, critical assets, um, you know, whether it be manufacturing floors, production plants, utilities, energy grids, uh, you know, oil pipelines, the adoption of trying to di digitize some of those operations obviously leaves a pretty big uh, gap um, and vulnerabilities that, that do rise. So focusing in on OT security solutions, you know, can help remediate some of those uh, possible, uh, you know, vectors for bad actors to get in. Um, and then ultimately being able to leverage uh, threat intel from, you know, a very robust uh, security organization like Fortinet, where we're analyzing, you know, uh, over 100 billion data points a day uh, and then sharing that knowledge across the whole ecosystem, um, you know, and then leveraging some of the AI ML type engines to crunch those those numbers and not only prevent what is known today, but what could be happening uh, in the future. Um, and so where we see uh, a large bulk of our customers as they work towards this convergence of networking and security um, is really, you know, how you start off at your infrastructure. So setting up, you know, something typically we find firewalls uh, as kind of the base entry point and, you know, moving forward into next year, you slowly see the progression of, not only controlling uh, the infrastructure and networking, but then enhancing how different sites communicate with each other, leveraging SD-WAN to both not only lower total costs, but also optimize what your specific application experiences are. Um, and then rolling that same idea that you have at, a, let's say, a data center out to your different branches so you can ensure the same level of security across your different sites, regardless of what they are. And then lastly, which is the big push we're seeing um, you know, in the last couple months going into next year, is this idea of rolling out um, zero trust to not only what users access, but within systems via different segmentation capabilities and proving identity and device posture um, beyond just, let's say, traditional uh, VPN type technologies, right, for securing remote users. So I'll leave you everyone with a, a snapshot of you know, just the different platforms and solutions that Fortinet does have to offer. You can see that we break it out typically by something in the secure networking space, application space, um, user device security, um, and then knock and sock. Um, type tools as well. So the goal as part of our security fabric is to have each of these different components uh, communicate with each other, share telemetry across each other. So when it comes to incident response or just threat remediation, you know, you have a platform that is being able to communicate with one another and you know, ultimately will lead to better outcomes, both from a uh, proactive and reactive um, response. Uh, so with that, uh, you know, I'll hand back over to the e-security team and thank you for uh, for having us. Thank you, Ian. We're now going to move on with Ramey Bailey from Trend Micro. My name's Ramey Bailey. I'm an MSP channel account manager for the West Coast here at Trend Micro. Uh, and today we're going to be covering risk to resilience and leading with cybersecurity risk management. 
So for today's discussion, I'll center around these four areas areas of takeaways. Uh, to start out, we'll be reviewing some of the big shifts in the threat landscape that you're facing, and then I'll talk about how you can accelerate your cyber resilience. We'll also talk about winning with cyber risk management and some industry mandates that you might see, and then we'll close out on talking about how Trend Micro can help. So around 2015 is where we really started to see some major attributes of what we see in ransomware today. Uh, this era was the rise of as a service ransomware groups, uh, different from the previous area, eras that we saw that was more like about social uh, like constructing and just emailing and tricking people into paying money. It was now more technical and it was focused on encrypting as many as important files as you could versus just tricking a user. We also saw the payment demands uh, increase into thousands of dollars and payments via cryptocurrency actually became a lot mainstream as well. Uh, in this evolution, ransomware is more targeted for example uh, like cloud environments, gaining entry via multiple like entry points, and uh, focusing on double extortion tactics. Uh, now that it's like kind of morphed into that, the payouts are a lot more excessive and can be upwards of a hundred thousand dollars. While we only look at ransomware today for this particular presentation, the same sophistication can be, can be seen across all other threat uh, types within this space. And beyond the sophistication of the threat landscape as the digital transformation continues, uh, we have to navigate the growing attack surface. Uh, your attack surface is the intersection between uh, cyber assets and attack vectors. Uh, essentially all entry points for unauthorized access into a system. These cyber assets can include physical desktops, AVD, user accounts, SaaS applications, mobile devices, cloud assets, and IoT devices. In these attack vectors, ransomware, uh, compromised credentials, phishing attacks, vulnerabilities in code, etc., can take place. This growth in the attack surface is exponential and creates an added challenge uh, for clients and partners alike on how to effectively manage the growing attack surface. So the last shift that I'm gonna talk about today with you um, is the shift from cybersecurity to cyber resilience. This is more of a mentality shift than anything, uh, and we really saw it uh, really accelerate as we exited like COVID-19 years. Uh, and this mentality is shifting from focusing on prevention to focusing on preparation. And in the prevention mentality, you can really get caught up in like the tech or threat of the day, and it, it kind of becomes a game of whack-a-mole. And if you shift your focus to preparation, like what happens after the boom, this shift actually reflects the recognition that it's not possible to completely prevent a cyber attack. Rather, organizations need to prepare and effectively respond to them when they occur. And cyber resilience is like a scale, like how resilient can we be while everything is constantly changing and moving? The shift continues today, and it's not something that you can shift into overnight, obviously, but MSPs such as eSecurity play a big role in helping clients become more cyber resilient. So the second st step on our path to resilience is refining, um, or for some even defining, CRMs. So let's talk briefly about some components for cyber risk management strategy. So first off, number one is risk assessment framework. Uh, 
you're going to choose a risk assessment framework. There are many out there, and oftentimes they intertwine a bit. Um, I recently did a webcast on CIS controls, um, and following these guidelines can really help ensure your success with cyber resilience. The second component is going to be developing a CRMP. This is where your people, process, and tech fit. Some things you should probably consider um, are like, um, are you taking a platform approach? Where are your integration points? What are the key technologies you need to address your business risks? Which technologies address multiple risks? Some questions you might ask yourself is, like, what is my management overhead? Or where are there opportunities to consolidate these technologies? And then, of course, there's incident planning. And unfortunately, this is, I find, a kind of a weak area uh, for small businesses within this space. Um, and this is going to be a place where you can really close the gap by working really closely with your e-security rep. Any incident response plan is going to uh, include the following on the screen, and that's going to be the who's, that's going to be the stakeholders, who it's affecting, the playbook, what's the plan, who's doing what, and testing your playbook, and then testing it again. And then, most importantly, I would argue, is continual training for your employees. In a strong cyber risk management platform, it's going to help your organization better manage cybersecurity risks, and it's going to provide a holistic view of your security posture, and it's going to really help streamline those key cybersecurity processes to make sure you're ready for whatever comes your way. And lastly, let's just touch on how Trend Micro can help. So uh, I'm just going to focus on three product bundles today. Of course, we have you know a plethora of offerings, um, and it's not a one-size-fits-all. But a lot of my partners and customers alike are gravitating towards these. So let's go ahead and touch on them. Uh, so there's worry-free EDR. This is going to be endpoint protection with detection and response. Simply put, this is going to help you track down what happened, who was affected. It's going to speed up your recovery and make you more resilient in the long run. And then there's worry-free XDR. This includes the endpoint solution that I uh, touched on previously, but it also has two email solutions. Cloud App Security, which is API driven, it's going to be a file sharing um, application protection product, and it's going to protect things like Office 365, G Suite, Dropbox, and things of that nature. And then you have Trend Micro Email Security Advanced. This is our gateway solution. This is going to protect your inbound and outbound email. And with the advanced feature set that's included with the XDR, you get email continuity. Um, so speaking of resilience, this is going to allow you to still operate even if you're under attack or if an attack is happening. And then across all of those, you're going to have detection and response capabilities. And then we take it one step further. We have co-managed XDR. And what this is, this is worry-free XDR with the added benefit of skilled Trend Micro tech, uh, technical support. And they're going to be providing you 24 by 7 monitoring of noteworthy events, proactive threat hunting, incident and response, remediation assistance. And this is going to give you the ultimate cyber resilience. That being said, I just want to thank everyone for uh, staying on and listening to my presentation. Uh, if you have any questions at all, please reach out to your e-security rep. Um, and with that, I'll pass it over to Tom. Yeah, thank you very much. I am going to share my final slide here. Uh, just to summarize, though, that the, the top level solutions that we're recommending is, number one, make sure that you you have an optimized security roadmap, so you do what you need to to plan that and and get the most spend for your dollar, um, which means defining your gaps, prioritizing them, defining your solutions and prioritizing them. Providing a top level security monitoring detection and response solution is a necessary solution if you really want to elevate your security beyond disparate sort of solutions, even XDR 
is only going to provide a certain level of solution between those individual products um, that a vendor provides, right? And then managed security can help in terms of reducing costs, increasing your security, um, adding next-gen solutions, cloud, cloud security, zero trust to support and address the data sprawl issues. Um, and then, of course, leveraging the vendor solutions that are increasingly XDR type solutions. So they're integrated within their own product line. And then lastly, redundant email security. Um, so thanks again for attending. Uh, we will send you a post event email with a link to the video recording. And we will post an event questionnaire sent uh, to you that we'd love for you to fill in. So it's what, you know, uh, help us pre uh, prepare for future events. You can give you an opportunity to tell us what topics you'd like us to speak on and, and you'd like to hear about. Um, we will address any uh, outstanding questions that were uh, requested and that we didn't have a chance to talk about. Um, and then let us know how we can help you with your 23 year end uh, security and 2024 planning. And we'd love to talk to you about that and, um, and, pu and put out a roadmap of how we can work together. So thanks very much. Um, have a great day.